Hi there, my name is Ron Rogers, and this video is titled United States Air Force T-37 Instructor Pilot Tales of the Gear Handle. Now the gear handle could be a rather interesting mechanical device for new pilots in the Air Force. Now you see the T-37 cockpit here. There's a lot of dials and lights and all sorts of stuff. And we each had a gear handle. The instructor had one and the student has his gear handle over here. All right, so we come down initial, we pitch out, six degree bank, 2G pitch out. We roll out near below 150 knots now, which is the uh, gear limit. And you take and you put the gear handle down. Now we had a little memory aid. Uh, once you put the gear handle down, it was handle horn, light slice pressure. And that was the gear handle is down. The landing gear warning horn was silent. You had three green lights, meaning the gear was down. The two red lights were extinguished in the gear handle, one in each gear handle, and the hydraulic pressure had recovered. Well, I had a student who, we came down initial, we pitched out, going great, airspeed's fine. He slaps the handle down, doesn't really put it down, he just kind of slaps it down, he goes, handle horn, light, lights, pressure. And I go, okay, well, let's, let's take a look at that. The handle is halfway down, the horn is still going, you have no three green lights, we have two red lights in the handle, and the pressure is recovered. And he goes, oh, okay, let's put the gear handle down for real, and let's go through and absolutely make sure that we have the proper indications, not just rattling off the little memory aid there. Now, another time, we're coming down initial, we're out at the auxiliary field, and uh, we're doing a practice single engine, simulated single engine approach. So we pitch out, we come back around, he's got the power back. And on the single engine approach, you got to, you know, kind of watch your airspeed. Uh, usually, of course, it would take more power than less. And he's having a little trouble keeping his airspeed under control. And I let him start coming off the perch, start the final turn, but I don't want uh, the mobile unit to send us around too early. I want to have a little uh, cause and effect here. So I say to my student, I said, okay, why did I take the aircraft? And he said, my airspeed's a little high. And I said, that's absolutely correct. And I go, let's have a little cause and effect here in analysis. Why is your airspeed high? Silence. And I said, okay, what is that beeping sound? Beeping sound being the gear warning horn that uh, the gear was not down. And he goes, oh, yeah, we need the, we need the gear for the drag. Well, we corrected that situation. I have a little story I want to put in here. It uh, doesn't really relate to the uh, the gear handle directly, but um, I was having a formation check ride, and as an instructor, you get check rides very often. Now, the people who give these check rides are in the training command, Stanavel. These people are very experienced pilots. Uh, they really know what they're doing, and uh, they are selected by Stanavel to be in Stanavel. Stanavel selects you. You not do not select Stanavel. But we had an instructor pilot who was kind of a fair-haired boy who had been chosen to check out the new wing commander in the T-37. That was going to be the aircraft he was going to fly. So after he gets done checking out the wing commander, they're talking, and uh, the wing commander says, hey, is there anything I can do for you? And he says, well, I'd really like to go to the check section. Well, this guy really wasn't qualified. He didn't have the experience, the aptitude to be in check section, but he's the guy giving me my check right. And he gives me a situation here. Okay, I'm in the lead aircraft in formation here. We just broke ground, and the, the T-37 has a, a very poor seat. They say if you're above 100 feet, uh, you can successfully bail out, but they also say it works a lot better if you're above 2,000, so that's quite a, a gap there. And he says, okay, I'm lead of the formation. I just took off. I haven't even reached 100 feet yet, and both engines quit. And he says, what are you going to do? Well, I immediately went through the Vold pace procedure of setting up a 100 knot glide, putting the gear down, and uh, shutting off both engines and landing straight ahead. And he says, well, what else? And I go, well, I would land straight ahead, open the canopy, and uh, walk to a farmer's field, a farmer's house, and tell him I needed a ride. He goes, no, no, no. What about your wingman? And I go, well, what about him? And he says, aren't you going to tell him to break out? And I go, if I lose both engines and he's off, he's in near takeoff power, he is going to be 
by me like a shot. And he says, what if he pulls the power back and tries to follow you down? And I said, if he's that stupid, he deserves to die. And you could hear one of the other Czech airmen from the other cubicle just start laughing. It was kind of fun. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed these stories. Thanks for watching.